ready? It's the 27th of May. And the biggest day of my life. I'm at the airport with my family, but we're not just going on holiday. We've packed our whole lives into bags and boxes, and we're flying to the other side of the world to start a brand new life in New Zealand. But about half the Brits who moved to another country changed their minds and come back. What if it doesn't work out for us? Strap yourself in and find out, because we've got a one-way ticket. We've been busy preparing for this moment for the last four weeks, so our story really starts back in April. This is me. My name is Daniel and I'm ten years old. Everyone calls me Dan. My little brother Jake is seven. This is our house in Devon. And this is our mum and dad. Most families, when they move house, they move to the other side of town. But we are going to move to the other side of the world. New Zealand is pretty much as far away from Great Britain as you can get. It's nearly 12,000 miles away and is split into two islands, the north and the south. The people who live there call themselves Kiwis after the local Kiwi bird. That's where we are in the West Country. Around England. Plymouth. And where are we going to travel? To New Zealand. And which yeah. island are we going to go to? Um, North South. North Island. North, North Island. Island. We'll be living in the capital, Wellington. Yeah. And what's the nickname for Wellington? Wellington City. <laughs> no, the Windy <laughs> City. Oh, it will be when you get there. Yeah. This all started because Dad has found an amazing new job in New Zealand. So, as a family, we've decided to move there. We only have four more weeks in the UK. Then, we're off. I think New Zealand's over there. I think it's yeah, I think you're probably right. You need to head out across the Channel, bump into France, get a bit of lift, and then over Europe. Keep going, keep going, keep going. When we arrive in New Zealand, we'll be living in a little holiday home. So we'll have to look for a new house and a new school. We know from our own experience a lot of people have made the big move to New Zealand, um, and then when they've got there, decided it was the wrong choice and they've come back. So once we've been out there for a while, we'll have a big decision to make. Should we stay or should we return to the UK? If it doesn't all work out, we have to come back. Um, like, I may not have sort of any friends left. They might have forgotten about me by then. Flying to New Zealand takes 36 hours and the tickets are really expensive. So we have to say a big goodbye to all the people we love here in the UK including our grandparents. Hello. Hello. Hi. My granddad is a very kind and very spoiling granddad. Come on, you two, here we go. When they told me that they were going to New Zealand, it was a mixture of emotions. One was sad because I, I wouldn't like them to go, but the other one was joy for them as a family. Ah, oh, thanks, granddad. Over the last couple of months, I've been trying to get my granddad up to date with everything, like face talk and stuff like that. So when we're in New Zealand, we can like sort of see it, see each other on the computer. Have to press the answer. Yes, I thought we did that. I keep up, but it's it's hard. It really is hard work because I don't really understand the terminology that they come out with. But I'm learning. Hello. All right. Give us a big wave. Can you see me, Grandad? Yeah, I can see you. Considering his age, I thought he'd never actually achieve it, but he is. So, Grandad, what, what was your week like? My week? And I've been out in the garden for the first time for ages. With the video links, I can talk to Daniel and I can talk to Jake whenever they want to, and I can see them and we can have a good time together as if we're in the next room. Ah. Uh, <laughs> It's two weeks until the move. <laughs> Mum 
Mum says we can't take everything to New Zealand, so we need to decide what to leave behind. A JLS album that I hate. Mum will probably want that. I started sorting my stuff out by making three piles. This is the charity pile. This is the bin pile. And this is the keep pile. I'm getting rid of this train. It's a bit babyish. My friend dared me to buy this, so I did, and I'm leaving it behind because Justin Bieber's rubbish. It's going to be really tough to say goodbye to this special someone. Bailey um, is basically my cat. I like him because he, well, sort of boy stuff. He sort of farts a lot of the time. He's the world's best cat farter. Bailey gets terrible sunburn, so we've decided not to take him to New Zealand. Bailey means the world to me. I can't imagine him without me. And, or the other way around, me without him. Luckily, some family friends have said they'll give Bailey a new home. Okay. I know you didn't like it. This is about the point that it all got too much for me. It's sinking in. I'll probably never see Bailey again. Hiya. Hello, Hello. Bailey come to see you. Let's bring him in here, put him down there. And then you can say hello. I sort of just went upstairs, stayed there for a minute. Bailey's never going to get on a plane and visit me in New Zealand. So it's time for our last cuddle. It was quite hard, but with 300 tissues, it helps you. Just five days until the move. Today is my last day at school, and I feel quite nervous saying goodbye to all my friends and everything, but I hope it just goes well. This is a presentation about moving to New Zealand. Dutch explorer Abel Tasman sighted a new land which he described as mountains and covered in a cloud in the south. He had discovered New Zealand. In the presentation, Jake was being a human puppet <laughs> for everything. Rugby was introduced um, to New Zealand in 1870 by Charles Monroe. You can hear the mighty hacker echo throughout the stadiums as the All Blacks take out sporting <laughs> rivals in the Tri Nations and Bledstoke Cup competitions. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm gonna um, miss my friends a lot. Look, look down, it says, Ben, you are awesome. Hi, I will miss you. Much Have you seen what you look like? No. He wants goggles on me. I actually never thought I'd say this, but I think I might miss school quite a bit. Packing day. So this is it. The removal men are here. Let the madness begin. We're flying to New Zealand with just one suitcase each, but everything else in our house needs to be packed into lots of boxes. It looks like a portion of fish and chips. Is it? That's a lot of fish and chips. 
Are you going to be okay in there? Yeah. Are you sure? Okay, there you go. Bye. See you in New Zealand. Bye. Everything in our house has to fit into this freight container, which will take a whole two months to travel to New Zealand on a huge ship. Bye, Hal! Bet we beat you to New Zealand. The big day! We spent the last few nights with our grandparents to stock up on as many hugs as possible. But now it's time for our final goodbye. See ya. Take care. Good journey. It's really hard not knowing when I'll see my grandparents again. But I'm still excited about starting our new life. Time for our 36 hour journey. Gentlemen, start your engines. Our New Zealand adventure is underway. Hello, Wellington. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. It's our first morning in our new home. We're jet lagged, but we want to get to know Wellington. We've heard we can get the best view of our new city from the top of Mount Victoria. Look at that view. I think this is where we live. New Zealand became part of the British Empire in 1840, before gaining independence in 1947, but it still has our Queen on its money. My first impressions of Wellington is Orphic. Orphic is a word I made up, awesome and epic combined, my two favourite words. First things first, we're hungry. We have an empty fridge. We don't have anything to eat at this moment of time. God, they're heavy. They're like heavy, they are, Jake. Oh. Most of the food here seems quite similar to back in the UK. But there are some pretty strange-looking types of fruit. Oh, look at these. What is it? It's... It's... Kiwano. Oh. When we get home, we're going to chop it up and then we're going to hopefully taste it. I hope we like it. Ready to test it? Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> wow, they taste like peanut juice. That's really annoying for me. Right now, we're all crammed into this little holiday home, but we can't stay here forever. So, our Mum and Dad have arranged for us to look at three houses so we can decide which one to rent. Here we go, house number one. To help out, I'm marking each house out of ten and Jake's going to take photos. The first house we looked at, I think it was about the worst house in New Zealand. It was pretty bad. The wood is mostly rotted away. 
The house looked like it had a goblin lived in it. It was so gross. Rating out the whole house, 2 out of 10, not very good. OK, then, house number two. What do you got? The next house that we saw had a load of scaffolding around it. So we thought, uh-oh, this ain't going to be a very good house. But when we went in, it was a really nice house. I don't like it because it had a man's bottom showing on it. <laughs> So the rating of the whole house is probably about seven. Last up, house number three. The next and final house of the day was a amazing house, to say the least. Wow. Look at that view. The view was so nice. It was like the highest house on the hill. Rating of the whole house, 10 out of 10. <laughs> I really want to go for the third house. That house is amazing. Luckily, Mum and Dad loved it too, so this is going to be our new home, Orpic. Right now, we don't feel much like Kiwis, but maybe exploring what's around us will help. When we came here, I was really looking forward to seeing the wildlife and everything. At one time, there were no mammals in New Zealand, only birds. There's a bird. Where? Some sort of white tail. That one, Dad. I think it's that one. Me and Jake brought our little wildlife book so we can track down all the wildlife and, like, tick them off when we find it. They're eels! There's three eels! We've been eel spotting, which is quite cool, and we've been feeding them with bacon. Come on in, buddy. There's always another way to attract eels, and that's to use a small boy as bait. <laughs> Long, thin eel. Long, thin eel. The people to live in New Zealand were called the Maori, and today we're visiting one of their traditional villages. When the Maori meet people, they rub noses, which is called a hongi. <laughs> that means hello in Maori. Jake and I are really excited about tonight because we get to sleep in a traditional Maori hut. We've been invited to train as warriors. So the tattoos or the moko, they would tell somebody who you are, they talk about your ancestors. When I looked in the mirror first, it looked quite strange, but at the same time really cool. You get these to start off with, and normally when you go into like battle, you get another tattoo. As they go through more achievements, they get more and more, eventually they've got a whole face covered up. And there you are. Thank you. Next up, we're going to learn the hacker. Big shoulder with the part. Bend up the knees, straight back, chest out, and let out a big loud. Hey! 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 Come got your sounds. Yeah! The hacker is a dance to greet people and for the men to scare the opposition in battle. The Maori people are really cool and they took a lot of pride in the hacker and what they did. I think I got really good at the hacker. Hey, yeah! It's time for bed. Today, understanding Maori culture makes me feel a lot more like a Kiwi. All this is fun, but we do have to start our new school soon. We're getting a tour of the local one this weekend with a teacher to see if we like it. Do you have a school uniform? No, we don't. Yes, yes. yes. What are the other kids like? Well, we have a range, age range of five to, I think the oldest are probably turning 13. The kids at this school, I hope, are really fun, kind, help me sort of join in, settle in, which I hope is going to be good. I really want this new start to work, but there are so many things that can go wrong. Will I make new friends? Will New Zealand ever really feel like home? Will we all want to stay? Six months later. So a lot can happen.
seven and six months. We moved into our new house. Good morning. Dad started his new job. We started at the local school we looked around. Happy birthday to Dad and Jake. We both had our birthdays. Jake's joined the Cubs. Cubs, do your best. Way And I've signed up to the Sea Scouts. It may not look like it, but right now it's November. The UK's winter is New Zealand's summer. But first things first, it's time for school. When we get out, we have to put on suntan lotion so we don't get burnt. It feels all weird. It gets a lot hotter than back in Devon. Bye, See ya. I get to school, I do my goal of what I want to achieve in the day. Next, we um, we do ka a katakia. Eti atua. Eti atua. Manaki tia mai mato. Which is a Māori blessing of, like, the day, saying, I hope we have a good day, I hope we survive. <laughs> Amen. School here is really different to in the UK. Signs out. Good man. The kids do the costume patrol. And the class pet is this amazing fish thing called an exolotto. She's pretty. At break time, I hang out with my friends, Luke and Brooke. When Dan started coming here, he sounded different to all of us because he's yeah. just come from England. And it was kind of strange, but I got used to it and we're friends now. The friends over here um, are awesome and, and they like playing games that I like to play. I joined the school's hacker group. You'd never get this back in the UK. Why? Get no! No, I'm not <laughs> When you're singing, you can't just sing. You need to reach right down into your gut and bring it out. I'm really proud about um, like starting the new school because like I think I'm kind of making it work and I think it's going to always hopefully stay that way. One, two, three. So that's all good. But the biggest difference we found between living in New Zealand and living in the UK is earthquakes. So far in New Zealand we've been here half a year and we've already had two really big earthquakes. It's so serious that we have to practice earthquake drills at school. What do we do when we hear or feel an earthquake? Let's do it all together. Uh, Drop, cover, hold. Earthquake! <laughs> it's quite a big thing and living in an earthquake prone place isn't the safest place to be. What do you think about the earthquakes then, Dan? Incredible power, isn't it? Yeah. There's one part of my my body which thinks earthquakes are kind of scary, but the other side's like earthquakes are cool and awesome. Say there's an earthquake now, Dad. Yeah. Look at this. Drop, cover, hold. Yeah. You meant to hold on to something rather than just your head, though, isn't it? It does, as a mum, make me very, very worried for what's going on around and um, for that reason I've given Dan a mobile phone and he gets very upset when I keep telling him where's your phone, where's your phone because I just need to know that if an earthquake happens I can get hold of them. The earthquakes would never make me move back to the UK but it would get me thinking about should I have moved here but I'm sure it'll be all fine. Apart from dealing with earthquakes, coming to New Zealand has meant making sacrifices. The hardest thing about moving to New Zealand is leaving your friends and family behind. Hello, boys. How are you? All right? Uh, good. good. Hi. How's school going, anyway? Really good. Very well. What's happening around you guys? Well, 
you're you're in the best part of the weather because it hasn't stopped raining since September. The bad thing about video calling is that you can talk to them, you can say hi, but you can't actually touch them and they're not, and they're not actually there. Well, I must admit the pair of you, I miss you hell of a lot. I miss you loads and loads. It makes me feel quite um, sad because cause I'm used to just walking through the door and stuff and of their house and then just hugging them. But over here, when, when we um, video call them, all we can do is just start speaking. Goodbye. Someone else I'm missing too. Yes. Hello, Bailey. 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 Yes. You didn't tell me that one. With family, you know they're always going to be there to can keep in touch. Now, I'm not saying Bailey's new owners can't keep in touch with us, but it's less likely to see Bailey again than family. So it's quite hard, but I think I'll get through it. Give him lots of cuddles from me. <laughs> bye, bye, Bailey. Bye, Bailey. Bye, Bailey. Bye. Should we stay or should we go? Even though I miss everyone from home, I it, I think New Zealand's worth it for all the outdoor sports and stuff. Mum and Dad have decided they want to stay in New Zealand and that makes me and Jake very happy because we do too. Moving here I think was definitely a good decision because we have all of this and this is really good. I definitely feel our family's future is in New Zealand. Um, it'll be the measure of how long that future is. We'll let you know in 10, 15, 20 or 56 years time. Since the move I'd say I'm, I'm Kiwi and British. British on the inside and Kiwi on the outside. I think I'm gonna like turn into more of a Kiwi as I grow older, but I'm always gonna have that little bit of British inside me. I'm so glad we only got a one-way ticket. I feel about the future that it's gonna work well and it's gonna be amazing. <laughs> <laughs>